right guys, this is Joe East here. You're looking at the SMRT1, the Smart Protective Relay Test System. So this is a relay test set. You look on the left, binary outputs, binary inputs. So at the top here, you have the current output, which maxes out at 60 amps. You have the voltage output here that maxes out at 300 volts at 50 amps. You can also convert this voltage channel into a current channel if you so wish. It's a single channel or single phase relay test set. Another way to think about this is that it's a function generator. So this current output and this voltage output, you can output several line voltages at particular frequencies and you can also output on the current channel, several current outputs at several current amplitudes and current frequencies. So you can think of it as a function generator in some ways. You notice to the right side, there's an orange cable. That's the connection to the laptop for control through power DB light. All right, to run the SMRT1 unit, we're gonna open power DB light and walk you through how to connect it uh, in software. So you go down, you open PowerDB Lite in your menu, you click on it. Now it's starting, and this is PowerDB Lite again. And then you select under Relay Test Sets, the SMRT. You go through the menus here. Typically you hit OK for most of these unless you want to specialize in a particular thing and you're familiar with PowerDB. There it is. Uh, please select upper left icon to connect the unit. You see if it's not connected, there'll be X's in this uh, icon, so we'll connect it. Uh, it comes up in this little bar here in the uh, menu as it's trying to connect. It has sensed the unit online. Successfully detected an instrument. Give it a bit of time, there it is. And now we have uh, the basic user interface for PowerDB uh, Lite. For running the SMRT1. You'll notice it only has a single channel because the SMRT1 is a single channel test set. Alright, you've noticed I put an oscilloscope on top of the SMRT unit. That's so we can monitor some of the signals to give you some idea of what uh, what's happening on the voltage channel specifically. Alright, now you should notice I have connected a set of leads to the voltage channel, the red one down there on the SMRT1 system, and I've connected that to uh, channel 1 of the oscilloscope. You'll see the oscilloscope leads here, and the, um, the voltage leads for the SMRT in the same place. Now you'll notice in the current channel, I have inserted a, um, a shorting lead, so we can actually uh, play with some currents here, because you can't have current without a conductor. We have the voltage leads going to the oscilloscope here for channel 1. We have a shorting leads for the current on the SMRT1. On the left, you'll see the laptop here with PowerDB light running to control the voltage in the current channels. All right, let's do a basic signal that we're all familiar with here in North America. Let us do a voltage at 120 volts, no phase shift at 60 hertz. So for the SMRT1, you simply click on the sub-channel uh, icon here, and then you click on the, uh, the master uh, on icon. So basically the sub-channel has an on-off icon that's controlled by the, uh, the master on-off icon. So when I hit this, it'll go on. You'll notice the scope trace. And there we are. You see on the oscilloscope here, we have a 120 volt RMS sine wave with a peak to peak of 344, amplitude of 340 volts, and a frequency of approximately 60 hertz. So next what we're going to do is show you how to ramp up and down the voltage and ramp up and down the frequency manually uh, with arrow keys. So let's, um, let's select this right here, which is kind of a, the ramping function icon. I'm going to open it up. We're going to select the increments. So I like to choose increments of 5 when I'm doing volts, so 5 volts increments. We have to select the channel. So once it turns yellow, um, the channel is ready to do the arrow key ramping if these three are yellow and after you click the check mark obviously you notice the voltage is highlighted here in blue and that says he's ready to do up and down arrow keys on your keyboard so we're at 120 let's go down to 60 remember we chose increments of five all right so let's just ramp it down to 60 very simple all right now we're at 60 on the user interface and if you look at the scope 
our RMS value is around 60. Uh, the amplitude is uh, 170 volts. The high is 86 and the peak to peak is about 172, 174. We, you've seen the sine wave change in amplitude here on the scope. Now let's raise it back to 120. And you see the sine wave expanding on the scope as I go to 120. All right, let's go down to 100, which may be a fault input you might try to do on some systems, some relay uh, inputs. So let's go to 100, there you go, 100 volts. On the user interface, on the scope, the RMS value is 100, which is what we expect. Amplitude, 284. Uh, the high, 142, and the peak-to-peak, -peak, 288. Frequency is still at 60 hertz. All right, let's put it back at 120 volts. And let's vary the frequency now with the up and down keys. All right, so what we need to do is go here and select. And instead of choosing amplitude here, we want to choose frequency. All right, now I like to do frequency increments in terms of one, uh, just for convenience sake. So we'll choose that. So now we have these three highlighted. We're going to do the check mark. And now you notice frequency is in blue. So right now we're at a standard uh, voltage and frequency for North America. And you can also watch the scope here as we ramp up or down the frequency. So let's say you want to inject a fault or you want to ramp up the frequency to see if the relay trips or you're doing product testing, whatever. So let's just ramp up the frequency to um, 80. All right, we're ramping up. You notice on the scope, the frequency is changing. The sine wave is changing. And now we're at 80 hertz on the user interface. Uh, the frequency on the scope is approximately 80 hertz. Same amplitude, RMS, high and peak to peak. So we kept the voltage at 120, but we just changed the frequency. Let's go up to 100 just to show you how this works. 90. 100. So at 100 hertz here. The scope tells us that it's at 100 hertz approximately. Again, amplitude. Uh, of the voltage has not changed. Let's go back down to 80. Right, we're at 80 hertz. Okay, let's continue going down to 60. All right, in North America, this would be a normal voltage. Let's go down to 50 hertz for our uh, cousins across the oceans. So let's go to 50 hertz here. We're at 60 hertz, so we're going to go down to 50. All right, now we're at 50 hertz. So you guys outside of North America more likely run into 50 hertz signals like this. For your CT inputs, you probably see something like this. So let's go back to 60 for a North American style frequency. We're at 60 hertz here. Let's set up a pre-fault fault setup with the SMRT1 single channel. So let's set up a pre-fault of a normal uh, 120 volts, 60 hertz. So we're going to select pre-fault here, uh, 120 volts. We're at 60 hertz. We're back at, let's set up the fault, 120 volts at 65 hertz. So let's look at it again. Here's pre-fault, 120 volts at 60 hertz and fault at 120 volts and 65 hertz. I'm going to turn it off here just to show you how you would do it in an actual relay test. So. If I were setting this up and there were a relay connected, I would have enter pre-fault at 120, 60 hertz, which is the normal setting, and then the fault setting, we're trying to trip a frequency uh, setting, 120 volts at 65 hertz. So now we're all set for pre-fault and fault. Let's set the pre-fault timing at five seconds. And when we hit play, it's gonna run through the sequence, pre-fault to fault. So let's hit play. Watch the scope here as the output changes. It wants me to turn the channel on. So you turn the channel on. Then you hit play. And once you hit play, it's gonna run through the sequence of pre-fault and then fault. Let's hit play. See the scope's changing. It's at normal, 60 hertz. Counting down, boom, now it's at 65 hertz. So after five seconds, it went to 65 hertz. Let's play that again for you. So we're going to simulate the contact, which aborts the test. And it said I trip time at 10.56 seconds. Um, so let's run through the sequence one more time. We hit play. 
It's going to go from 60 hertz to 65 hertz in five seconds. Watch this go. 60 hertz. Three, two, one. Boom, 65 hertz. And then it's counting down to the trip time. Uh, when I press simulate contact, it'll simulate that as the trip time. So there you go, that's like an over frequency fault. Let's set up a pre fault fault with an over voltage case. So let's say pre fault is at, again, the normal 120 volts, 60 hertz. And let's say we want to do an over voltage check. So under fault conditions, we want 60 hertz, but we want 125 volts here. So here's pre fault. Let's change this to 10 seconds. So pre fault. Again, 120 volt, 60 hertz. Fault, 125 volt, 60 hertz. We're going to play, hit play here, and it's going to run through the pre fault to fault sequence. All right, we're at normal 120, 60 hertz, counting down. Four, three, two, one. Boom, 125 volts. And you see the scope's changed. All right. Let's stop this. All right. Let's do an under voltage with pre fault fault functions. Again, pre fault is the normal case, 120, 60 hertz, say. And then fault, let's set up an under voltage. Let's say 110 volts. Okay. Now let's hit play to run through the pre fault to fault sequence, simulating the fault. Play. Scope's on. We're at normal 120 volts and 60 hertz, counting down on the pre fault. Four, three, two. One. Boom, now we're at 110 volts. You look at the scope, 110 volts. So that's a basic pre fault to fault setup with the SMRT1 system. Let's uh, simulate contact. Let's use the SMRT to do some voltage ramping here. So we're going to go to this icon here, select it. Under standard, you'll see ramping. Choose voltage. Select the ramp parameters channel 1, amplitude. Click check mark. And we're going to choose the linear ramp here. A start voltage, let's start at 60 volts. And let's stop at 120 volts. And let's increment at 2 volts per second. All right, we're all set up, so we should be able to hit play and watch the sequence on the oscilloscope. So let's hit play. There we are. We started at 60, we're ramping up to 120. Watch the scope, also ramp up an amplitude. RMS actually. 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 110, and 120. So it ramped up and then it stopped. So let's ramp down now. We're gonna set up a ramp down function. So let's start voltage at 120 and let's ramp down to 60 volts. Let's, um, of course, it's going to be negative 2 volts per second. Looks like we're ready. Let's try this. And it's going to start at 120 volts and it's going to stop at 60 volts. Let's play. Watch the scope. Started at 120. User interface, that's going down to 60. Watch the numbers or the uh, signal here on the scope. 90 volts. 80 volts. 70 volts, 60 volts, and it stopped. All right, all right, still with the SMRT1. Let's play around with the current channels a little bit. Remember, you gotta, you don't have a, a device to inject current and just short it. Let's just keep the voltage uh, at a normal 120 volts. Now let's uh, inject the current. Uh, with a max of, uh, let's, one amp. let's inject one amp for now. All right. We're gonna select both channels. But it won't turn on until I click the master switch. So let's go master switch. There it goes. We have the voltage output on the scope and the current output you can only see here. I don't have a current measurement device. Um, let's let's uh, ramp the phase of the current so you can see this diagram here of uh, the difference between um, the current and voltage phase. So I'm going to choose a uh, current channel, um, ramp phase, and in increments of one. So watch as I increment the phase here, how the graph changes on the phase. One degree, two degrees. Let's go up to 90. All right, now we're at 90 degrees. So here's the current vector 
or the current phaser and the voltage phaser. Alright, just to play around with this, let's um. let's get the uh, increments in terms of 5 so we can go a bit faster. So let's just go to 180 now on the current phase phaser. So you see the current phaser moving out to 180. Alright, so we're at 180 degrees current phaser and voltage phaser. Alright, let's continue on to 270. Alright, again, current phaser in yellow, voltage phaser in red. Let's go all the way to 360 on the current phaser. Back home. And 360. If you come in from this side, it'll read 360. If you go a little bit lower, come back home, still says 360, right? So in order for it to come back to uh, zero, you want to come this way. Five, zero. Okay, there's zero. So let's just move the voltage, um, the voltage phase just to show you what the difference would look like. So let's uh, do a ramp function on the voltage phase in terms of uh, 5 degrees, channel 1 phase, voltage. Alright, let's turn this one off so we don't ramp him at the same time, although we could if we wanted to. So you see the blue is still highlighted in voltage for the phase, so let's crank up the phase on the voltage. All right, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90 degrees on the voltage phaser. Let's go all the way to uh, 180 on the voltage. All right, let's go to 270. And let's just complete the circle here with the voltage phaser. All right, 360. Let's go back around the circle, back to zero. All right, now we're back home. That's the phaser ramp up and ramp down for voltage and current. Just to show you what we can do here with the SMRT. Board.